Hello, this is Reza Rad from Redacad. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is Spark inside Microsoft Fabric. You hear about like Spark, Spark Compute, Spark Cluster, Spark Node, uh, all of those things. What is this Spark actually? How does it work? How it relates with Fabric? What are things you need to be aware of? And how does it work behind the scene? Let's go and check it out. What is a Spark? A Spark, or basically the, the full name is Apache Spark. Apache Spark is an open source project first initiated uh, at uh, Berkeley University in 2009. Uh, it is a multi-parallel processing uh, engine uh, for analytics, for big data uh, at large scale. Uh, those times we had Hadoop for uh, big data processing. This is much faster, like 100 times faster than how Hadoop performed. It is open source project. It is not only for Microsoft. It is uh, for others, basically, like, uh, like it's an open source project. They created it. Microsoft is using it. Databricks is using it. Many other uh, vendors are using this platform or this open source uh, engine to uh, to basically have all of their data engineering and data science based on it. It's an engine that works based on multiple languages behind the scene. You can interact with it using R, Scala, using uh, Python, Java, and SQL. Um, this engine provides some uh, capabilities, which, which among those are like a Spark SQL, which is giving you like a relational uh, querying capabilities, Pandas, which is a library inside, um, uh, inside Spark, which uh, gives data scientists and data engineers ability to work with data, um, MLib, which is a library for uh, machine learning, GraphX, which is for graph processing and uh, streaming uh, services and, and all of that. So these are capabilities that Spark provides. Uh, and wherever this Spark engine is used, that capabilities would follow. Uh, now, Spark is used also as an engine behind the scene when we work with, uh, with the data engineering workload and the data science workload. So when you work with these workloads, basically behind the scene, the Spark engine is running. It is fully managed though. You don't really get into the complexities of spinning up on the Spark engine, uh, setting up the configuration of that. It is all uh, like set up by default. You can configure some parts of it, but um, you don't have to go into that complexity. Uh, I'll, I'll go and explain some of these uh, setups for you. So uh, some of the terms that you need to be uh, familiar with, like we have a Spark pool and we have the Spark instance. So what is a Spark instance? A Spark instance is when you connect to that Spark engine behind the scene uh, and, and you connect to that Spark engine behind the scene using like when you run a notebook code or a Spark job definition. And I have a separate video about notebook, you can go and check it out. Uh, so when you run those, uh, it initiates a Spark engine a session to that Spark engine. But that Spark, uh, it, it initiates a, a Spark instance. That Spark instance is based on some of the configuration, metadata configuration, some of the characteristics you define for that, which runs that uh, uh, Spark instance within that configuration, and that is called the Spark pool, uh, and it is initiated when you actually connect to it. So uh, it is not considered as a compute um, uh, before connecting to it. So when the instance actually starts, at that time the compute usage is actually started. And then we also have a Spark node. So uh, because it's a multi-parallel processing, and there are lots of technicalities behind the scene, I'm trying to like simplify the whole uh, explanation. Uh, there are like multiple nodes involved. Consider each node as like a machine that does the job or a thread, something like that. So we usually have like one header node or one header thread and multiple uh, worker nodes. The header node usually gets the job and then uh, controls and manages it and pass it to the worker nodes 
to do the job. And they are also called executor nodes. So usually we have like two or more worker nodes and one header node, and that provides like a um, parallel processing uh, structure of that. Uh, now, as I said, these are a lot of details involved. The thing about Microsoft Fabric is that inside Microsoft Fabric, things are managed much more uh, easily. So we have those uh, Spark pools, which is like the configuration. We have the Spark um, um, instance defined under it uh, as two different types of pool. We have a starter pool and custom pool. Consider a starter pool as like a uh, easy to start type of thing. Like if you don't have experience in the Spark, if you don't know what settings you should set up, if you don't know what um, things uh, should be set at what configurations, a starter pool is designed for you. A starter pool is like fast to start. It takes like few seconds to start. It is usually associated by default to a workspace based on the capacity, uh, fabric capacity that you have. Uh, and there are some configurations around that. Custom pool is when you are are an experienced Spark user, you know what settings to set for what purposes, then you can go and create your own custom pool. To create the starter, uh, to use the starter pool, the starter pool configurations usually are like this, but it is depending also on the uh, on the fabric capacity setup that you have. Uh, so it can be uh, like the nodes and auto scaling functionality, dynamic allocations of that. So all of these are part of that. Uh, and if you want to design a custom one, you'll go and build that custom uh, pool yourself. Where, where do we go and define these? These are under the Microsoft Fabric workspace setup. So when you go and create a workspace, uh, workspace is as uh, usually associated with one of these Spark pools, and then you go and configure it. Uh, let me head over to my workspace setup and show you how this works. So here I have a, uh, I have a workspace which I am going to do to go to that workspace. So you see, this is my uh, workspace, which is, which is associated to a fabric capacity. When I go to the workspace setting, um, and I'll enable my zooming tool so that you can see it better. Uh, so when I go to the, to the workspace setting, uh, inside my workspace. Uh, there is, of course, a section that you set up your fabric capacity that is under license info. And this is where you go and set up your uh, capacity with this. In my case, because this is a trial capacity, so I'm using that. If it is a fabric capacity you have, it is associated with that. Uh, and then under the data science, data engineering part of it, you would see a Spark setting. And that Spark setting would, would bring you to the place that we have this, this um, Spark pool setup. And as I said, by default, it is a starter pool setup based on the capacity configurations that you have, the license that you have. Um, so if you want to customize these settings, uh, like the starter pool settings, if you want to change it, you can click on edit. And this will bring to the place that you can change the auto scale and uh, dynamically allocation of executors. Uh, auto scale basically means that the Spark would uh, scale up and down the number of nodes uh, needed depending on the activity and requirement coming, the number of jobs coming. And the uh, dynamic allocation of executors means that like we had a driver node or let's say the header node and executors which are like the um, like the worker nodes. Uh, these executors, sometimes when they are not doing anything, they are at idle state, it disallocates the, um, the connections from them and it will allocate it to another one. Usually when it is good, when it is like you have a number of jobs that requires a number of processing, things like that. So these are uh, uh, the setups and you can set the minimum and maximum for those. Or you can say, I would like to run my own new pool, which is the new custom pool that you would go and create. And then you can set up a name for that, like Reza custom pool, I can call it. Uh, then you can set up the size for the node and there are different uh, configurations for these depending on your capacity you would get different sizes there are some documentation documentations around it you can choose the minimum maximum for auto scaling or for dynamic 
allocation. Now, um, you can also run this on a single node if you want. The way that it works is that you'll bring it all the way down to one node, you disable the auto scale. This basically means that uh, you wouldn't have that like header node, worker node, um, or driver, executor node. Everything runs under one node, uh, which you might ask why mm, situation like that, because we want everything to run on a multi uh, parallel processing type of style, which is correct. But there are situations that you might need single node execution. For example, the pandas library in uh, in Spark doesn't really work well with multiple processing. So um, for any, let's say, data exploration or data preparation things that uh, I do as a data scientist, I might go and uh, use a single node, uh, which wouldn't affect the other part of, uh, like, let's say, others using it. Uh, so these are the settings that you can specify and configure. Um, now, once you have this set up, how the uh, execution works. So I'll go to a notebook experience here. Uh, this notebook is connected to my um, lake house. Uh, this lake house has some tables and some files. Uh, this notebook code is going to actually read uh, one of the files in here. Let me just connect to my lake house. So this is my lake house. Let me hide this uh, output, clear the output. I'm going to run it now and show it to you how it works. So here I have the notebook um, and the lake house. The lake house has a file, sales CSV file, which I have that file. Uh, using this piece of code, I'm actually reading it into a Spark data frame and uh, showing a summary of that and then basically just saving it uh, as a Delta format. And I explained in another video what Delta format is. So when I run this, this would basically create a uh, session to the Spark instance. And that is when the Spark instance would start. So when I click on run all, this would create that session first. Uh, the session uh, instance of Spark would be created based on that Spark cluster configuration. In this case, this is that starter pool, which I haven't done any changes on that. And then this, this piece of code would run under that. And here you would see some of the Spark job information as it happens, like how they are running, things like that, the resources that they are using at the same time, you get some of the details of that. Now, usually this shows after the job is finished, then you see the resources in a much better way. And uh, so let me go and see it. So you see a summary of the table loaded, and then now that table is going to be saved as a Delta table inside my uh, inside my uh, lake house, which is actually done. And this is a big table, by the way. Uh, so when I refresh here, I should see that table loaded, the sales table loaded here. Uh, this would show me some summary of how the Spark jobs run, uh, the resources that it has used. Uh, like this is a um, this is a resource allocation of that. I can see some details on the log side of it, but you don't really need all of these details. These are all abstracted from your view. This code basically runs on a Spark engine, uh, the Spark engine that you configure over there. Uh, and that is one of the good things about uh, using it in this environment. If you want to go and see the details of this session, you can go and click on this and see the session information. Uh, the session automatically expires. If you remember that dynamic allocation, so this is where that things is happening. Uh, and, and that's about it. So this is, uh, this is Spark inside Microsoft Fabric and um, a Spark in general. It's a multi-parallel processing uh, for big data, uh, which comes with some configuration. We call them as uh, Spark pools. In Microsoft Fabric, we have starter pool as well as custom pool. You can configure it at the workspace level. And then when you do experiences in data engineering, such as lake house experience with notebook or Spark job definition or data science experience, you are basically using that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Until the next video, bye.